Hi everybody, uh, Doggy Doc, Doggy Doc Designs Andy here. I uh, just wanted to go um, and do a little showcase of the ET figure set that's uh, going out the door uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Um, not only just to showcase the set so everyone can see, um, you know, what we did, but also for the collectors who uh, obtained one to show them kind of how to handle everything and how everything works. So let's get to it. Uh, so we got the, the sets in this nice... A uh, box here, it's hard to see on the camera, but there's a nice texture to the box. A uh, nice simple box art. I'm a real fan of simple box art, something that looks nice. Um, so we open that up. And first thing we're going to see is the moon backdrop that I've included, uh, which is sized to hopefully fit a detail pretty nicely for you guys, if you so choose to use it. I'm going to put that off to the side over here. Um, then we've got our foam engraved uh, Albi right here. Uh, that holds the, the COA. It's protective foam for the set, of course, but it also holds the COA into these little tabs. Um, so we'll pull that out. Numbered COA, 25 sets total, um, and all the contributing artists. So, of course, myself for um, organizing the project, doing all the accessories, the packaging, uh, etc. Um, Sean Dabbs, who sculpted both Elliot and the E.T. figure, um, and the E.T. Uh, basket figure. Uh, Jacob Raymeyer for the portrait painting of E.T., uh, and then tailoring by uh, D.Fly. Uh, so we'll showcase all those items here in just a minute. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the protective foam as well. And we'll go through um, everything, all the items kind of from left to right to show you how they're housed, um, how to get them out, and how to how to handle any of them. Um, there's a little bit of protective foam in a couple of spots here, one over Elliot, and a couple pieces that are over the tires of the bike, and they actually just help hold the bike in place a little bit more. Again, off to the side. So let's start with Elliot. Um, fully posable figure, as I think anyone would come to expect, with an amazing portrait by Sean, with an amazing paint job by Jacob. Um, and of course, amazing tailoring by D.Fly. A lot of people ask me what body I used. Um, and so, if for anyone who's curious, it's actually the Star Ace Harry Potter bodies that, that were used for their kid lines a couple years ago. Um, they don't make these anymore, so obtaining these was really difficult. Um, uh, but there was nothing that was going to work better. I mean, it's perfect proportions, perfect height, uh, really nicely, you know, posable articulations, really good on the figure. It's a high quality body, so um, hopefully you guys will appreciate that. Uh, shoes sculpted by me, 3D printed, painted by me. Um, hopefully all the accurate details, you know, all the stitching, patterns on the bottom, Nike logos on the back. Um, he's got little socks, of course, which I did. The tailoring itself, the rest of the outfit was done by D.Fly. Um, and, and it's just wonderful. We decided to do a, a hoodie that was not functional in the sense of zipping because, you know, functional zippers, as most of us are aware, are, are enormous and they look entirely out of scale. So since you never really see him in the movie with his hoodie unzipped and opened or anything, we decided closed hoodie, I'm sorry, closed zipper, um, and I, I made a fake zipper pull, which is much more in scale, which I think looks great. Eyelets are metal, um, braided cord for the hood, and of course the hood is, is functional, you know. Um, there's a wire in there, so you can really, sorry for bumping the camera, you can really sort of pose it down so it lays nicely flat along his back, very natural looking, but then you can pull it over his head, of course. And then the best way to actually get this to work is to sort of hold on to the hoodie by his face and then pull, or sorry, close to the drawstring eyelets and pull. Pull that down and it cinches nice and tight. And then because there's a wire in there, you can really pose it around his face so that nothing, you know, everything looks in scale and it looks natural. Um, it's even got, if you pull on it just the right way, that little point that you see on his hoodie in the movie. Um, it might be better to pull it over his face a little bit more, but you get the idea. So, really love that. Um, the jeans, really nice material. That perfect light color in the film. They're they're much lighter blue. They're not real dark blue jean. And then, you know, there's some details that you'll almost never see. He's got his thermal shirt under there. You know, it's there, but you're probably not going to see it much. And then, you know, his jeans have the hardware on him and everything. So, um, just thrilled with how he turned out. Uh, so, hopefully... A, you know, you guys are happy with that too. So we'll set him off to the side here. Above Elliot, we have the Speak and Spell, 
a really fun little accessory to do. A lot of little parts for this little thing, but, um, you know, all of the raised buttons on the front of the speak and spell. Each button has its lettering painted on there, decals for some of the orange symbol buttons, Texas instruments. Um, on the back, you know, you've got all the details of the injection molded plastic that are things like patent numbers and, you know, battery warnings and things like that. Um, off to the side, you know, we've got headphone jack and power cable jack. Um, so we're really happy with this. You know, mostly you see ET with this, but, uh, and he can hold this. I'll show you that later. Um, moving over, we have the, the flower pot accessory. Um, due to the way that it was made, you know, I, I won't call it fragile. I actually think it's pretty sturdy, but for packaging, I wasn't going to do a, a cut, a cut out exactly the shape and size. It just wasn't going to work. So what I did was I made a little holder. So you pull up sort of on these tabs, you pull the whole holder out. And then the flowers are wrapped in this red paper to give a little bit of um, movement ability during shipping, which is actually better than holding it super stiffly in place. You just unwrap the flowers, and, and there we go. Got our nice little flower pot. Iconic, you know, very symbolic part of the movie throughout the film. These are the flowers as they look good and healthy. Um, not, you know, when they're dying, not when they turn really huge and have all this extra stuff grown out of them later in the movie. So... Really happy with those. Again, they're, you know, you can't manhandle them, but they've, they've got give to them. I mean, they've got flexibility. Um, and, and it's hard to show, but in the in the light, there is some translucency to the leaves and the petals and everything. So I'm just thrilled with how these turned out. Let's see if I can get them a little closer. You know, lots of nice little details on these guys. All right, so moving over to sort of the star of the show, I guess, in my opinion, and I think in many others, outside of E.T., is uh is the bike um really proud of this this was a from the ground up build um i 3d modeled the entire thing there's a lot of 3d printed parts there's there's a lot of metal in there so the entire frame is metal the front fork is metal the handlebars are metal um the spokes are metal um, a lot of the other stuff is 3d printed or fabricated um so but it you know it, it's it's i'm really proud of it i hope everybody likes it um, in terms of getting it out, it's, it's, the bike's pretty sturdy, pretty durable. Um, I recommend just maybe grabbing a part of the frame in the back and the basket in the front and just sort of gently lift it out. And then you'll see how I handle this. So, sorry, let me focus the camera here. Um, but you know, when I, when I move this guy around, I oftentimes just grab it by a tire, um, you know, and then put it where I need it. You know, or or the basket is not a bad place because actually the basket is attached to the handlebars themselves as well as the support structure underneath. Um, don't worry too much about touching parts of the bike. The entire thing is clear coated, so you shouldn't be rubbing off paint or decals at least easily. <laughs> if you really manhandle, maybe. Um, but there's an entire coat of uh, acrylic sort of sealer on the entire thing. Um, but. Uh, all the bike is functional, as I've made sure to mention, you know, throughout the build process. Functional to a degree. So the handlebars turn, turn the front, uh, the, the tires spin, okay, rear tire, along with the sprocket and the roller chain. Um, something I wanted to be real clear about to the collectors there is one of the few parts that isn't metal that I wanted to be metal is the, is the sprocket and the pedal arms. Um, metal shrinks when you cast it, and so in order to avoid shrinkage that would mean the teeth don't fit the roller chain properly, I 3D printed it because I could rely on 3D printing's um, accuracy a lot more than the shrinkage of metal. What that means is when you want to pose the pedal arms in a particular spot for Elliot's feet when you put the figure on, um, don't, don't pull the pedals like this. I mean, you see me doing it, but I don't want you to do that. I would recommend... Um, you move the tire to move the pedals, uh, to move the pedal arms where you want them. Um, something I forgot to show is the pedals do spin on there and you know, they got their little reflectors and everything. Um, so, so yeah, so if you want to pose it, do that. You actually can <laughs> sort of ride the bike along a surface to pose it a certain way if you want as well. That's fine too. Um, another thing to point out is there sometimes is a little bit of rub of the chain on the tire. I'll see if you can hear it on this one. You hear that? That's that's okay. Um, obviously, I'd prefer not to have that, but in terms of the 
engineering and to get all this stuff to fit right where it needs to and the fact that this chain is not as small as one would be in real life um there can sometimes be a little bit of rub of the chain on the tire tread don't worry about it again the tires are clear coated with a dull coat so that they, they look like rubber um and so you're not going to be rubbing paint off or anything like that so I, I wouldn't get too worried about that but i wanted to point it out in case you came across that um you know, another little innovation or a little, little thing I did as I showcased a little while back is the rear brakes are not attached directly to the bike firmly. They're actually attached by a magnet. That way, so you can pull them off, you can put them back on. That way, if you're posing it and the tire happens to hit, see how the tires kind of rub in a little bit? The brakes actually flex and move out of the way rather than <laughs> snap right off. As well as if you're posing it and you bump it with your finger... You know, you're more likely to just get it to flex and give a little bit rather than, again, rather than snap right off. Um, so there's no reason to just take them off unless you want to take them off while you pose it and then put them back on. But that that gives you some some sort of insurance, if you will. Um, again, you know, metal, this is called rhodium plating. Um, so it looks like chrome, you know, shiny silver. Um, the basket is sort of a nylon plastic. It's really sturdy. And then it's got, of course, the appropriate <laughs> aging. Um, it's actually a blue basket painted white, and so when you see the blue parts in the film, it's the white paint scratched off. So what I did was I painted this blue first, then I painted it white, and then I scratched the white paint back off in certain areas, just like you see in the movie. Um, again, all the decals are accurate to the film. They are all clear-coated. Don't worry too much about rubbing them off. Um, just really thrilled with this thing. I hope you guys like it. It's, it's really neat. One of the coolest things I think I've made from the ground up. So I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side. As you can see, you know, again, you can kind of handle it. It's pretty sturdy. And, and and another thing is oftentimes if I store this when I'm not posing it, you know, if I want to set it off to the side somewhere while I do something else before I put it on the stand, um, I actually just set it upside down on its uh, handlebars in its seat like that. Um, next, we'll hit the basket ET. As you guys are hopefully aware, there's no way the real ET would fit in the basket. Um as he as his normal size so obviously in the film there's two ets one that's smaller for the basket so you'll notice if you compare this et to the full figure his head is smaller his body is smaller that's just because movie magic that's just what they had to do um so uh again head sculpt done by sean dabs uh something i don't think i ever said specifically um in my work in progress you know updates over time is these head sculpts are different his expression in the basket is a bit different than his expression as the full figure he's got a, got a little wider open eyes his mouth drawn back a little bit like he's sort of smiling excited um it's the we were going for the look on his face right when Elliot's bike takes up off the ground um so hopefully you guys notice that it's subtle but it's there um again sculpted by Sean Dabbs I painted this guy his blanket is attached directly to his head and the underlying body. Um, we went for as accurate of a blanket as you could get. In the film, it's sort of this thermal uh, hospital blanket that's got multiple rows of double rows of dots or holes all up and down it. Um, and thank you, huge thank you, to D. Fly who actually found this fabric for me. Despite my searches, I could find nothing like it. Um, and I think it's about as close as I can get. Originally, I had custom made a fabric where I laser cut the holes and got the pattern just right. But this is even better. So really happy we found that. Um, the blanket is attached, as I said, to the underlying body and the head. So it's glued to the head and to the body and to the neck area. I did that because I wanted to have a sense of uniformity of, of how the um, blanket looks on the figure. So... <clears throat> It's not attached everywhere, as you can see. There's there's areas that hang off. But the idea is you just kind of fold the fabric a little bit around his body. Then you take your bike here, of course, and you just set him right in there, just like in the movie. And there you go. There we go. All right. So we're going to set him off to the side. And our bike. And then lastly, uh, we have our ET figure. So, again, um, amazing, awesome sculpt by Sean. Um, what we did for this guy is, you know, to, to eliminate complexity and actually some of the showing of major articulated joints, 
he is a interchangeable arms sort of figure. So you pose him by just taking his arms out and you put in a, he's got a left arm that holds a right arm that points with the light up finger. And then these are two relaxed arms and you can sort of interchange them and mix them as you want. Um, so uh, one thing I wanted to mention is the paint job on him is I used a special mix that has a, a sort of like a polyurethane in it. So the paint is really, really durable. Um, so when you're messing with them, I wouldn't worry too much about paint rub, except, um, actually I have my, my wedding ring on. I'm going to take that off because I don't want to rub on him with that. Um, and then, so for example, to remove his arms, you know, you just give it a little wiggle off comes one arm. Here's his holding arm, a little wiggle. And there you go. Same thing with his light up finger. Actually, I'm going to switch this just because it'll be a little easier for me. Okay, so for the other arm, there's wiring hidden in there. So when you pull the arm off, you'll see there's a wire that's going to stick out a little bit. Okay, you can pull that out just a little ways. Be careful. If you pull too hard, you'll pull the wiring right out. We don't want to do that. And then you've got an arm. So with a male end and a female end of the wiring uh, to hook these together. And actually, I've got to get a little tool here to do this. <clears throat> All right, so if you see, what I like to do is actually kind of hold him like I'm sort of hugging him with my hand, um, and then you just attach male to female. And then the finger, you know, these are hexagons, so you can actually put these in any way, but the finger is meant to explicitly point slightly up like that, okay? All right, so then once you're all set with the wiring, I'm mean, sorry, the hands, you are going to open and you've got the battery compartments okay and two batteries go in there you're looking for cr2032 batteries and as a matter of fact as i'm looking around i realize uh i don't have mine here let me go grab a couple and i'm going to show you how to put batteries in Alrighty, so you've got CR2032. These are the larger button cell batteries that you're going to find. There's two battery slots, and what you do is you put the positive side facing out both sides. So out that way and out that way, okay? And there's two switches in there. Uh, they're really they're a little hard to get to with your fingers, depending on the size of your hands. Um, so I usually just use like a tweezers or a little pliers, and you just reach in, flip the one switch on, reach in, flip the other switch on. And now we have our light up ET with his heart and his finger. And it's just, I just love it. I just think it's awesome. And obviously, you know, those lights aren't going to be on all the time. He'll, he'll look good displayed with or without them. But it's just a neat feature that I just couldn't not include. So again, you can be a bit, you know, I don't want to say rough, but you can, you can handle these. So I'm just going to turn these back off. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is it is very difficult, if not impossible, to get these batteries out with your fingers. So I do use needle nose pliers to grab each battery. There just isn't enough <laughs> contact area to get your fingers around to get those batteries out of there. There are not batteries included in most of these sets. I think some of the U.S. sets have them, but I can't ship batteries like this internationally without major issues. Um, so you'll have to go buy some. Sorry about that. Okay. Alrighty, uh, and then here actually I want to showcase the holding. We designed the holding hand to sort of universally be able to hold the speak and spell or the flowers. So as you can see, he's sort of cupping. So the flowers simply can sit in his hand just like that. Okay, speak and spell is similar. Uh, I, I've done it a few different ways with a... Uh, I kind of put it in there and I prop it against his body. But it looks just perfect, I think. The other thing I wanted to mention is we didn't really design a lot of articulation into his head because it really messes up the look of his neck. But because of the way the head is, um, it's simply uh, an insert just like his hands. 
So you can you can put that in there, and then you can give him a little bit of a, a head turn. And because of the way his neck is seamed, it's not super super obvious. Um, so you can get a little bit of a uh, you know a little bit of a look that way. Here he's looking at his own finger. Um, so just just so you guys know, okay. All right, and then lastly, so that that's all the pieces, uh, all the all the major parts. You've got a couple of pieces for the stands. Those are, those are going to be in the section with the basket et, and then. Finally, underneath all this foam, let me pull all this out here, is where I've housed the uh, stand, the parts for the stand. Okay, Probably, I'm not sure how well you can see Yeah, So the stand is acrylic, laser cut, um, and I left the protective paper on there. I figured people would appreciate that. So... Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show how this works. Okay. So you're going to obviously insert your uh, <clears throat> the acrylic rods. They should fit pretty snugly so you can sort of hear that. And then one of these acrylic pieces has a, literally a nail sticking out of it. Be careful. But that acrylic arm goes on the front. Uh, acrylic rod okay again nice snug fit and then the other one has just a single little hole in it and it's shorter that one goes on the back again everything was designed to fit snugly on purpose <laughs> and the way that the bike is mounted on here oh and then sorry there's finally uh, a little metal piece. So what we do is the little metal piece goes in that hole on the rear. Okay, right there. And that little metal hook is meant to go in one of those holes around the back tire. Okay. So like that. And then this arm here, hopefully I can show this okay, is meant to go underneath the basket, and then you'll actually, I'm going to raise that up, there we go, and what happens is that little metal nail pokes up through one of the holes in the basket, and Secures that in place. Um, and as a matter of fact, what I like to do is, and then you can turn this in the back. <clears throat> there we go. And there is your suspended bike. Let's see if I can sort of show you at the proper angle. Okay. And then you can actually simply raise and lower the uh, arms if you want a more, you know, like a takeoff pose. Let me see if I can show that a little bit here. Got to get it behind the, there we go. So now you have a little bit more of a takeoff pose. And then of course, you know, you set your ET in there. I didn't, I didn't space him very well. There we go. And then you can set your Elliot figure on there, of course, and everything should be plenty strong enough to hold nice and tight. I'm just going to do that. Um, you know, so this is, <laughs> this is a little harder than I probably wanted to do for the video just because you have to do quite a bit of posing to get him on there. But you sort of get, let's see if I can bend him a little bit better. I can, I can probably get something decent here. You sort of get the idea. Okay, he's obviously not posed. His feet aren't touching the pedals yet or anything. That will take a little work, but um, but there you go. So that's how that stand is meant to work. So hopefully that and that's a pretty good look right there. I have to admit, despite not getting the feet to line up. So so uh, that's that's our ET set. Um, I hope. The length of this video didn't put anybody off. I just thought it would be fun to showcase the set, all the details, everything that you'll be getting. 
if you were someone who got one, and if not, hopefully you can uh, just enjoy the work that was put into this by all involved, and can't wait to show you guys what's next. Um, Ralphie pre-order closes in about 10 days or so, uh, and then there will be some major teasers right at the beginning of the new year. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it.